Norman Asal Simons, who is suspected to be the station strangler in the Western Cape, is now out on parole under strict conditions after 28 years in prison. He was only convicted of the murder of one boy in 1994, the rape and murder of Alroy von Royen, despite being accused or suspected of involvement in over 20 other such cases. For more on this, let's speak to the Cape Flat Safety Forum's A.B. Isaacs. Mr. Isaacs, a very good evening to you. Um, good to have your time tonight. Let me get your feeling um, at the thought that tonight, Mr. Simons is out on parole, no longer in custody. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity. As the Cape Flat Safety Forum, which I represent as the chairperson, we were absolutely clear on the subject matter. We firmly believe that people, in terms of the, sub, the set subject, um, we firmly believe that the person should be set on parole based on the person have already done his time in terms of 28 years, in terms of our understanding. Yes, there has been the two schools of, of theory, the, schools two, the two schools of thought. The one school of thought that says that um, the said person should remain um, behind bars, and then there's a school of thought that suggested um, let's release. So, so clearly, that's the two schools of thought that we have within society currently. Mm. And one of the things that angered people in Paris, where Simons will now go to live, was that uh, basically he still believes that he did nothing wrong, even though he was convicted back in 1994. Do you think that is going to cause a problem as far as his integration into the community in Paro as a parolee? I'm, I'm sure, as I just indicated, and I've just alluded, there would be the two schools of thought. If you listen to um, on Sunday, there was a, a different school of thought in terms of my analysis that came out of Mrs. Plain versus the school of thought that uh, derived in Peru. The one school of thought that says let's 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 allow the person, but obviously in terms of. The, the, the notion that we are pushing as the Cape Flat Safety Forum must be strict. And the Department of Correctional Services, as we've been saying throughout, needs to ensure that they implement the letter, the, the, the law of the, to the letter, mm. so that we, we, we don't find ourselves in little cracks as we move along. And just now the other day we had an in engagement with the Department of Correctional Services where we've put certain measures in place. And, and, and obviously, in terms of the, my understanding of parole, the person would be under 24-hour um, house arrest. Yes, that's good. But, again, the Department of um, Correctional Services clearly have the pivotal role to play to ensure that we don't have a reoccurrence. And I'd like to talk to you then about the period in the late 80s to the early 90s when um, this man, Mr. Simons, was eventually arrested, convicted only in connection with the murder of Alroy von uh, von Royen, but people still believe that he was involved in many of the other cases, about 22 young boys who were raped and murdered in that period. You were involved, am I right, in some of the searches at the time. Are you able to describe what you recall from the period? I think at that stage, um, taking us back, and taking me in particular back, yeah, there was the, 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 the level of frustration from the community, noting the fact that um, children, in particular innocent children, have been murdered. There was this level of frustration from the community. And as you correctly allude to the fact that he was only convicted for, for one of the cases of the 22. So clearly from our side as the Cape Flat Safety Forum, we've been pushing, and even since um, this weekend passed up until now, let's open the investigation, let's broaden the investigation in terms of the other 21. Yes, I believe in, in terms of my briefing that there was a process of, of, of opening the investigation, but one can believe, and, and our notion is that that time it was 2010, it's 2023, it's 13 years later, we have the sophisticated equipment, we have the notions, and all the peripherals around us to open the set investigation, so that at the end of the day, those other 20 other families can also have closure mm. in terms of what happened to their, to their, to their children. And by 2010, you're referring to an inquest that was held around 2009 where the magistrate Marilise Roller found that, in fact, it was likely that Simons had killed Owen Wuffmeister, Donovan Swartz, Alino Sprinkle, Marcelino Cupido, Fabian Wilmore, and an unidentified child. But she then said that it would be futile to pursue prosecution because important witnesses or potential witnesses had died. Why do you believe that there'd be progress in the case now? 
I, I firmly believe, and as the, as the organization, we firmly believe there will be definitely progress because now we look, and we need to look at it in this perspective, the person that has been accused, found guilty, gone through the legal process has been released. So obviously, and, and in terms of what we've heard on, San, on Sunday, there are families that are, that, are, that are still in mourning. There are families that need answers. And clearly the state need to come and give answers to the family. Well, News 24 say they spoke to, in fact, the convicted killer's loved ones, and one of them, they say, said he was afraid of what's waiting for him on the outside. Do you think that he may be in danger precisely because people feel their crimes he still has to answer to, especially those of the boys I was, whose names I was just reading out a short time ago? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and one what do not want to shy away from it, I'm sure there would be, um, with any human being, there would be, the, 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 the notion that, that suggests that one becomes afraid specifically after serving that length of time and specifically serving for a specific crime. So there would be that level of fear. And, and obviously, uh, and again, I would say it, um, yes, um, the state would have to play their part now. And, and, and when I say the state, it's all, it, it needs to be a multifaceted approach. The South African Police Service, Department of Correctional Services, and whoever is involved, and also even to the extent that the Department of Social Development and the other formations need to play to ensure that, you know, in terms of the conditions that a sick person um, execute the conditions to the letter. Mm. Have the people of Mitchellstone, I know you said earlier, um, there are two schools of thought. Would you say there is one that is prevailing, one view of the majority as to whether, in fact, he's been forgiven? The, the, as I said, when there's the two schools of thought, one can pick up um, just on Sunday in the same meeting where a in particular uh, a female were, were angered, you know, but that's the one school of thought. So, so, so it's, you, you, you're literally looking into going into a situation um, you know, it's, it's difficult to describe. You know, will communities accept him? Will communities not accept him? You know, so, 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 so it's difficult to, to, to give a clear perspective that, yes, the said person will be accepted in the community or no, the said person will not be. And, 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 and our view is that once there's the, 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 the threat to life, then, again, DCS then will have to, or the, the state will then have to intervene and do the necessary. Mr. A.B. Isaacs from the Cape Flats Safety Forum speaking to us today about the release on parole of Norman Simons, who many people still believe was the station strangler who was believed to have killed about 22 young boys, raped and killed them, but only convicted for the rape and murder of one boy, Elroy Fondroyan, in 1994.